The sergeants will call in the absent members. A quorum is present. Without objection, we will grant the presiding officer and assembly members Butler and Mitchell unanimous consent to have guests and photographers at the rostrum, on the floor, and at the member's desk for special ceremonies today. We ask our guests and visitors in the rear of chambers and in the gallery to please stand for the prayer. We ask Assembly Republican Leader, the Honorable Connie Conway, to offer the day's prayer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Let us pray. Lord, we give you praise for our Women of the Year. We praise them for responding with compassion and sacrifice to the needs around them. We praise them for giving so generously of their time and resources. We praise them for making their communities a better place to live. And we praise you for the fact that they represent the great diversity of our state. 
Let us always remember the words of your faithful servant, Mother Teresa. We can do no great things, only small things with great love. Amen. We ask our guests and visitors to remain standing and join us for the flag salute led by Speaker Pro Tem Ma. You may be seated. Reading of the previous day's journal. Assembly Chamber, Sacramento, Monday, March 22nd, 2012. The Assembly met at 12, 9 a.m. Honorable Fiona Moss, Speaker Pro Tem of the Assembly, Presiding Chief Cargill, Dawson Wilson at the desk. Reading Clerk Timothy Moreland, reading the roll. Mr. Calderon moves and Ms. Conway seconds that the reading of the previous day's journal be dispensed with. Presentation of petitions, there are none. Introduction and reference of bills will be deferred. Reports of committees will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Messages from the Governor, there are none. Messages from the Senate, there are none. Motions and resolutions. Members, please join me in welcoming Amelia Dolores Garcia Medina, the former Governor of Zacatecas, who's seated in the back of chambers today. The absences of the, day's uh, of the day will be deemed read and printed in the journal. Mr. Calderon, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On, um, we request unanimous consent to grant the presiding officer and assembly members Butler and Mitchell unanimous consent to have guests and photographers at the rostrum, on the floor, and at the member's desk for special ceremonies today. Without objection. Also, on committee to committee re-referrals, pursuant to 96.1, we request unanimous consent to refer the following bills to committee. AB 2370 by Mr. Mansour from the Health Committee to the Judiciary Committee. Without objection. AB 2502 by Mr. Blumenfield from Transportation Committee to the Rules Committee. Without objection. Members, we have special guests present from Mexico. I'm appointing a select committee on escort to bring our guest onto the floor. The escort should retire to the rear chambers as I call their names. Republican Leader Conway, Connie Conway, Assembly Members Fletcher, Wesso, Laura, and Skinner. Please bring our guests from Mexico forward to their seats on the floor. Please be seated. Good morning. I'd like to welcome into our chamber this morning the distinguished honorees from around the state who are being recognized as our Women of the Year. We are also privileged to have in our chambers a delegation of four members of the Senate of the Republic of Mexico. Please join me as welcoming them individually. Senator Silvano Aurelos Conejo. Senator Adriana Gonzalez Carrillo. <laughs> Senator Claudia Sofia Corici Gar uh, Garcia. <laughs> Senator Amira Gomez Tumé. And also with the delegation, please welcome the Consul General of Mexico to Sacramento, 
Ambassador Carlos Gonzalez Gutierrez. If the members will indulge me for a moment, I'd like to say the following to our guests. Bienvenidos a la Asamblea Estatal de California. Nos sentimos muy halagados y honrados con su visita el día de hoy. Y a nombre de mis colegas y el mío, me gustaría desearles que este viaje sea de mucho provecho y mucho éxito para el pueblo de México y el estado de California. It is befitting to note that as we begin to celebrate Women of the Year today, three of the four senators visiting us are women. Senators, on behalf <laughs> Senators, on behalf of my colleagues and the people of California, I'd like to extend our heartfelt sympathies to those in the state of Guerrero and the greater Mexican uh, Federal District, the epicenter of last week's powerful earthquake. California is no stranger to disasters, and we understand the difficult process of coping with an event like the earthquake and the difficult road ahead with respect to rebuilding, and our thoughts and prayers will be with the people of Mexico as they recover from the earthquake. As members may know, last September I led a bipartisan delegation of assembly members to Mexico. This was the first time in several years that California officials had visited our neighbor, and we were very pleased to be able to meet with leaders of the Mexican government and the business community to strengthen the ties of commerce that bind California and Mexico. Those ties of commerce are deeply intertwined with our ties of history and culture with the people of Mexico. Many Californians, including myself, and many of the members of this body are proud to trace some of our family ancestry back to Mexico. My mother's father came to the United States from the state of Guanajuato in Mexico more than 100 years ago. My father made the same journey from the, the state of Jalisco in the 1950s. When my grandfather came to the United States, he registered with the U.S. government, paid a small fee of one penny. That penny was an investment in the future for himself, his children, and his grandchildren. That penny was a remarkable investment, a symbol of the hardship he faced and the future he was striving for. My father came to the United States for the same reasons as my maternal grandfather 50 years later. They came to the United States looking for new opportunities for themselves and their family. That has been the historic experience of immigration for so many people from around the world over the last 235 years. With every new addition to the American family, our nation is strengthened. It's a tradition as old as the United States, one that is reinvented every generation. That is why the California legislature is committed to working with the United States government to develop a thoughtful, comprehensive policy on immigration that reflects longstanding American values. This is an important issue for people on both sides of the border, and it requires thoughtful discussion. Ultimately, we know that the most important issues facing policymakers in California, the federal government, and the nation of Mexico continues to be our efforts to recover the economy from the recession. We must create jobs for our people, quality, decent jobs that will allow them to live with dignity and pride and the ability to provide for their families. And that's why we are proud to welcome you to California. Our state is changing in profound ways. Half of the children in California are of Latino descent. 38% of our population is Latino. The emerging generation of Californians is one on the cusp of something truly historic. They are the first generations of Californians to grow up in a state in which there is no majority population. They are the first generation to come of age in a world that is vastly smaller than the one we each grew up in, where ideas and information are communicated in a fundamentally different way. They are a generation 
whose perception of the world is entirely different than any that have come before, who recognize how interconnected we have all become. Because of that, they have a profound sense of justice towards every person, regardless of their background. They are the embodiment of one of America's most fundamental ideals, e pluribus unum, from many, one. But they are also the embodiment of a similar concept that Jose Vasconcellos called la raza cosmica, the idea that we will ultimately transcend the artificial distinctions of race that have historically distracted, uh, that have historically been used to divide people, and instead celebrate the synthesis of every culture into our society. They recognize that our differences are no longer distinctions, and that all must be treated with dignity and respect towards our natural rights. We may live in difficult times, and as a pluralistic society, both Mexico and the United States occasionally struggle to find common ground to move our people forward. As we confront those challenges, our guiding spirit must reflect a sense of justice for all our people. And the spirit of justice can be summed up perfectly in the words of Benito Juarez when he said, entre los naciones como entre los individuos, el respeto al derecho ajeno es la paz. Between nations, as between individuals, the respect for the rights of others is the embodiment of peace. As leaders, we must continually strive to enact just laws for our people, recognizing and strengthening their rights, their dignity, and their worth. We all want our people to succeed, to prosper, and to provide a better life for our children than the one our parents were able to provide us. That is ultimately the expression of society's progress, and we must look forward to ways to strengthen the presence of justice in all of our actions. We must try new solutions to old challenges and bring new ideas, new energies, new innovations forward to meet the pressing challenges of job creation. Mexico is already California's largest trading partner and we must continue to strengthen those ties of commerce and partnership. Over the course of, the vis of your visit, I hope that you receive the same respectful, enthusiastic, and warm reception that my colleagues and I received when we visited Mexico City. And I sincerely believe that as you meet everyday Californians, you will see, their faces, this, you'll see in their faces the same hopes, fears, and aspirations that my colleagues and I saw the faces of our Mexican neighbors when we had the priv privilege to visit. Our future is intertwined. Our ties of history and family are self-evident. Our shared commitment to just future for our people is unshakable. I want to thank you for extending us the honor of visiting the Assembly and ask my colleagues to join me in a round of applause to celebrate our continued good re relations with the nation of Mexico. I asked Republican Leader Connie Conway and the escort committee to join me at the center aisle. Ms. Ma, if you would.
Okay, I know that we have some other guests here today. Ms. Mitchell, would you like to introduce your guests? Thank you very much, Madam Speaker uh, and members. I'd like to bring your attention to uh, the gallery where we are thrilled today to welcome leadership from the far, far west region of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. We have Leona Bridges, National Social Action Commission, Ms. Paris Moore, the regional representative, Mrs. Don Boykins Owens, Social Action Co-Chair, Ms. Gwen Coley, social, Southern California State Coordinator. They are the leadership representing over 500 members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, representing 40 chapters across the state of California. If you would join me in welcoming them. Mr. Hall? So, yes, uh, Madam Speaker, I too would like to stand and recognize uh, uh, Delta Sigma Theta uh, sorority. Uh, they are the sister sorority to my fraternity, Omega Psi Phi fraternity, and we are always delighted to have them uh, in the Capitol wearing the beautiful red that uh, they are fashionably draped with. So again, let's give it up once again for the greatest sorority on this side of heaven, Delta Sigma Theta. Ms. Mitchell. Ms. Butler, you're recognized at Mr. Hueso's desk for your special presentation. Members, uh, I um, am honored today to have the privilege to introduce you to a woman who um, unwittingly became a pioneer and a trailblazer for equal pay and equal work, and whose name was emblazoned in history by President Barack Obama when he signed the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act of 2009. <laughs> which was his first official act of his presidency. In a snapshot, Lee Ledbetter, a working mother of two who worked at the Goodyear Tire Factory as a supervisor for 19 years before she realized her male colleagues were receiving higher pay for the same work, she successfully filed a lawsuit against Goodyear only to have it overturned by the Supreme Court. But that did not stop Lily. On, and on behalf of women, thank you, Lily, for continuing the battle against discrimination in the workplace as we know, working women today are still not paid the same as their male colleagues, and on average, women make 77 cents to every dollar a man makes. Because of Lily Ledbetter, young women and minorities entering the workforce today are less likely to be subjected to pay discrimination, and thanks to President Barack Obama and Lily Ledbetter, the fight for fairness is now stronger than ever, and they have indeed changed the statute of limitations so that there is actual recourse when this inequity presents itself in the future. On this day of celebrating strength and accomplishment, ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome for Lily Ledbetter. And I wanted to uh, recognize, too, um, this beautiful resolution from all of us here on the assembly floor. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. This is quite an honor for me. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Ms. Butler. The Honorable Shirley Chisholm, the Congresswoman from New York, once said, and I quote, our country needs women's idealism and determination, perhaps more in politics than anywhere else. And how right she was. Today, as all of our Women of the Year honoree, honorees are wearing a yellow rose, we celebrate the centennial of women, women the right to vote here in the state of California. We continue to grow and make change because of engaged and dedicated women like you. As we do each March for Women's History Month in this House, I'm honored to welcome the 2012 Women of the Year. Members and guests, today we take a respectful pause from our regular order of business to highlight you and what you do to make our state a better place to live and grow. Please take in the great company you keep as we read your names and accomplishments. We will now officially begin the ceremony to honor our Women of the Year. In keeping with our previous practices with regard to the ceremony, the names of the honorees will be read in district order. At this time, members who represent the first six districts should retire to the rear of the chamber. We ask that Assembly Speaker John A. Perez, Republican Leader Connie Conway, I will be acting um, as Acting Vice Chair of the California Legislative Women's Caucus. I'd ask you to come to the front of the chambers and we will present the honorees with a special, a specially prepared certificate after they are escorted into the assembly chamber by their respective members. If the clerk will please read the names of the honorees for 2012. Captain Anita Ortega, escorted by assembly member John A. Perez. Captain Anita Ortega is the Area Commanding Officer of the Hollenbeck Police Station for the Los Angeles Police Department, the largest division and the nation's third largest police force. Captain Ortega earned a BA to UCLA where she walked onto the women's basketball team. There she received All-American recognition and won a national championship. She has participated in the Police Olympics in basketball and racquetball, is in the UCLA LAPD Hall of Fame. Deborah Broner, escorted by Assembly Member Chesbro. From caring for our seniors as a board member and president of the local senior center to working with school children and teachers, her work on environmental causes and leadership roles with the Democratic Party, little gets done on the North Coast without Deborah Broner playing an important role. Leslie Loesch, escorted by Assembly Member Nielsen. Leslie Loesch has served as Tribal Council Treasurer of the Pascinta Band of Numlaki Indians of California since 1998. Leslie currently serves on the California Native American Heritage Commission, California International Relations Foundation, and Tehama County Girls, Inc. Under the careful guidance of the Pascinta Tribal Council, and the tribe has been able to secure a Small Business Administration 8A Corporation Certification. Laura Nicholson, escorted by Assembly Member Loeb. Laura Nicholson started as an editor for the Appeal Democrat, where she launched a strong shop local campaign. As CEO of the Yuba Sutter Chamber of Commerce, she advocated for over 700 businesses. A strong proponent of Save Bill, Air, Save Bill campaign, she helped protect Bill Air, Air Force Base from national base closures. Robin Raphael, escorted by Assembly Member Gaines. Robin Raphael has been selected for contributions to the community, impacting families, touching the lives of others, and making a difference locally and reaching out nationally to find a cure for childhood cancer. 
She founded the Keaton Raphael Memorial for Neuroblastoma in 1998 and has since helped raise $3 million for pediatric cancer research. Angelique Ashby, escorted by Assemblymember Pan. Angelique Ashby is Vice Mayor of the City of Sacramento, and in her first term of the City Council, she is a tireless advocate for her community, as well as a mom, business owner, and graduate of McGeorge School of Law. Dana King, escorted by Assemblymember Huffman. Dana is an Emmy-winning Bay Area newscaster whose stories have highlighted injustices locally and around the globe. As chair of and chief advocate for Moraine Kids, her passion for bringing equal opportunities to all children rallies the community to act. She generously uses her considerable talents as an artist and reporter to support critical children and community causes. Elizabeth Basilia, escorted by Assemblymember Allen. Elizabeth Basilia is one of the most storied public servants in the entire 7th Assembly District. She has dedicated her life to the betterment of her community as a public school teacher, women's and union rights activist, as well as a longtime member of the Sonoma County Democratic Party. Debbie Reynolds, escorted by Assemblymember Yumada. Debbie Reynolds is an administrator of Eschaton Wilson Manor, an affordable apartment community. She helped reunite World War II veteran resident with his brother in Japan. They were separated for over 60 years. Reynolds also directed West Sacramento's first Veterans Day Parade, making the first time that many local war veterans were publicly honored for their service. Sheila Boxley, escorted by Assemblymember Dixon, Dickinson. Sheila Boxley, CEO of the Child Abuse Prevention Center, is a statewide leader in child abuse prevention efforts, responsible for policy and system improvements, analyzing child death review data, leveraging federal funds, prevention services and education, and legislative advocacy, all to produce healthy and socially productive children and families. Ashley Gill, accepting on her behalf Julie Sliger, her mother, escorted by Assemblymember Huber. Ashley Gill oversees the Trees for Troops program at Green Acres Nursery, the business run by her family, including picking every tree. Gill 29 came up with the idea in 2005 and has since given over 1,000 free Christmas trees for families of active duty soldiers stationed overseas. Gill also serves on the board of directors for the California Association of Nurseries and Garden Centers. Alyssa Friedman, escorted by Assemblymember Bonilla. Alyssa Friedman has served as the Executive Director of Opportunity Junction since 2003, developing, developing it into a hub for training, education, and job placement. While in the Women's Policy Institute, she helped draft and pass 2004's Education Works Bill. She also served on the Contra Costa County Commission for Women. Rebecca Katz, escorted by Assemblymember Ma. Rebecca Katz, a licensed attorney, has devoted her life and career to public interest, social justice, and advocacy for the most vulnerable communities. As the Director of Animal Care and Control for the City and County of San Francisco, Ms. Katz has pioneered new policy initiatives and programs. Prior to taking the helm at SFACC, Ms. Katz was a Deputy City Attorney.
Mary McGee, escorted by Assemblymember Amiano. Mary B McGee has been a registered nurse with the San Francisco Department of Public Health for the past 25 years. In 1987, while working at the HIV AIDS inpatient ward at San Francisco General Hospital, she sustained a needle stick and later learned that she had acquired HIV. Together with fellow health coworkers and her union, SEIU, she advocated for regulations and practices that would require the use of engineered safety devices in healthcare settings. Arlise Curry, escorted by Assemblymember Skinner. Arlise Curry founded Bananas in 1973, a support and child care referral agency for all things about children. Arlise was plaintiff in Doe v. Ablita, successfully increasing child care options, created the Child Care Law Center, advocated for a statewide background checks, trust line, established housing rights for children, ending child discrimination. Diane Burgess, escorted by Assemblymember Buchanan. Ms. Burgess has extensive ties in the local community with a background in nonprofit and volunteer management. She has worked as a volunteer with Literacy Plus, the Red Cross, the Coastal Commission, Youth Homes Incorporated, Boy Scouts, Tuberous Sclerosis Alliance, the Tuberous Sclerosis Foundation of Northern California, and Mills on Wills. Regina G. Jackson, escorted by Assemblymember Swanson. As the Executive Director for the East Oakland Youth Development Center, Regina Tran Jackson transforms young people's lives by offering safe, nurturing environments and strategies for urban multicultural youth to grow and thrive. Ms. Jackson's leadership is best described as a stabilizing force for the center's curriculum and a positive anchor for the challenges of the 21st century. D.D.D. Adamo Musi Kien. Ms. D. Adamo serves as senior, escorted by Assemblymember Galgiani. Ms. D. Adamo serves as senior policy advisor to Congressman Dennis Cardoza and previously served as legal counsel to Congressman Gary Condit. She serves on the Valley Coalition for UC Merced's Medical School, the California Air Resources Board, and was appointed by Governor Schwarzenegger as a member on the Governor's Partnership for the San Joaquin Valley. Charmaine Banther, escorted by Assemblymember Hayashi. Charmaine Banther is a teacher at James Logan High School and has dedicated her career to creating learning opportunities and fighting for quality public education. She serves as the president of the New Haven Teachers Association and presides as vice chair of the California Teachers Association Pacific Asian American Caucus. Mayor Burns Langer, escorted by Assemblymember Hill. Mayor is an example of how one passionate woman can make a difference in our community. Mayor has twice survived breast cancer with optimism and a sense of activism, helping others to learn from her experience and face her own health challenges from a position of strength. Arminta King, escorted by Assemblymember Wykowski. In 1998, Arminta King became director of the Centerville Free Dining Room in Fremont. 24 years later, it has blossomed into a large-scale all-volunteer operation, serving more than 1,000 meals a month to people in the Tri-Cities. The Free Dining Room is a leading organization in the community that strives to improve the quality of life for those it serves.
Alicia C. Aguirre, escorted by Assembly Member Gordon. Alicia Aguirre is the mayor of Redwood City and its first Latina mayor. Having served on its city council since 2005, she is professor at Canada College and has taught in the English Institute and the Spanish Department for 23 years. Alicia was a Fulbright Exchange professor in Argentina. Mei Wei Wong, escorted by Assembly Member Fong. Mei Wei Wong has worked to bring critical news and information to the Chinese speaking community throughout her 27 year award winning journalism career. She is the first female executive editor in chief in the 35 year history of the World Journal. As, as an immigrant herself, Mei Wei is a mentor of API journalism students and an inspiration to the APA community. Cindy Chavez, escorted by Assemblymember Campos. Few public leaders can count on the kind of successes that Chavez achieved early in her public service. Ground groundbreaking health insurance for Santa Clara County's children was served as national model. Unprecedented construction of diverse, diverse housing and genuine city school partnership in downtown San Jose. Cindy has dedicated her life to increasing the quality of life working families. Melinda Markowitz, escorted by Assembly Member Bell. Melinda Markowitz is a registered nurse and as a member of the Council of Presidents of the California Nurses Association, National Nurses Organiz Organizing Committee ranks among the most prominent nurse leaders in the United States. Markowitz has elected to the CNA and NOC Board and the Council of Presidents. She has also been National Vice President of the National Nurses United. Heather Ann Sherborn, escorted by Assembly Member Olson. Heather Sherborn is principal at Oroville Wright Elementary. Her leadership and vision brought about an API increase of 115 points in the last two academic years. Mrs. Sherborn is a true ambassador for education and successes, successes of the whole child. Tony Ramos, escorted by Assembly Member Barry Hill. Tony Ramos of Manteca does much more for a community than simply building homes and developing business parks. She leads, inspires, and motivates the community. Her passion, leadership, and unconditional commitment to greater Manteca's children, families, and the arts is proof that one woman can make a difference in their community. Dr. Rama K. Khalsa, escorted by Assembly Member Monning. Dr. Rama K. Khalsa dedicated her professional career to improving health care and delivery and increasing access to health care services in Santa Cruz County, especially for children. She served as director of Santa Cruz County Health Services Agency for 26 years and is a true community leader. Ana E. Aranda, escorted by Assembly Member Alejo. Ana E. Aranda is a human resource professional, an outstanding teacher, and mentor of traditional indigenous culture in Watsonville, California. She co founded and co directed White Hawk Indian Council for Children, dedicated to teaching the traditional indigenous cultural arts, songs, and dances to the Pajaro Valley youth. Lorraine Louise Person, accepting on her behalf her daughter, Linda Banner, escorted by Assemblymember Halderman. Lorraine Person was a teacher, mentor, and friend to young students as public school teacher for nearly 40 years. She helped coordinate services between law enforcement and seniors, which formed the organization called Triad, the award citizen of the year in three separate years by local law enforcement for her work with seniors.
Community Water Center, escorted by Assemblymember Perea. The Community Water Center is a nonprofit environmental justice organization run by three dedicated and strong women, Susanna Dionda, Laurel Firestone, and Maria Herrera, help disadvantaged communities gain access to safe, clean, and affordable drinking water. The CWC plays an integral role in the formation of water legislation benefiting the Central Valley. Colleen McGauley, escorted by Assemblymember Grove. Colleen McGauley is Executive Director of CASA Kern County. She was the first CASA volunteer to serve in the Kern County Juvenile Court and has been with CASA since its inception. During her tenure, CASA has doubled the number of volunteers and the number of abused children served annually. Ruthie Jensen, escorted by Assemblymember Shajian. Ruthie Jen Ruth Jensen exemplifies the best in character and spirit. She has dedicated her life to promoting the agriculture industry and has spent over 25 years in various capacities within the California Women for Agriculture, which is a statewide organization that promotes women in agriculture, the backbone of California's economy. Victoria Riskin, escorted by Assemblymember Williams. Dr. Victoria Riskin has worked to protect human rights globally and locally as a founding member of Human Rights Watch in Southern California and a board member of the international organization. Her work has helped lay the legal and moral ground work for deep-rooted change to bring greater justice and security to people around the world. Jackie Irwin, escorted by Assemblymember Conway. Jackie Irwin is currently serving her second term as mayor of Thousand Oaks, where she has been a city council member since 2004. Mayor Irwin's tireless involvement with community groups, nonprofits, schools, and PTAs have made her a highly successful role model for women in Ventura, Ventura County and throughout California. Christine Ward, escorted by Assemblymember Smythe. Field representative to Assemblymembers Cameron Smythe and Keith Richmond. Chris has helped county, countless Californians throughout many difficult situations. Chris has been recognized as Lakeside Healthcare Volunteer of the Year and serves on the board at New Horizons, an avid Los Angeles Dodgers fan. She will tell you that her greatest joy is her family. Sylvia Fajardo, escorted by Assemblymember Fuentes. Sylvia Fajardo is the best of what California has to offer. She served our country honorably in the Marine Corps for eight years, earning the rank of sergeant. She continued to give back by becoming a teacher and currently serves as the principal of Pecoma Charter School. Joy Picus, escorted by Assemblymember Blumenfeld. Los Angeles City Council Member Joe Picus represented the San Fernando Valley from 1977 to 1993. Picus continues her civic involvement as a board member of several nonprofits. 
Through her leadership, the council adopted a comprehensive child care policy and pay equity agreement. As national leader in elder care, she was the prime mover behind an intergenerational daycare center for seniors and toddlers. Maricela P. Morales, escorted by Assembly Member Brownlee. Maricela Morales is the youngest and first Latina elected to the Port Wenami City Council in Ventura County. Raised by Mexican immigrants, she holds a BA in Human Biology from Stanford University, and she is completing an MA on Social Oppression, Power, and Liberation. She oversees the Health Access and Equity and Women's Sea Justice Projects at Central Coast Alliance United for a Sustainable Economy. Marion Dodge, escorted by Assembly Member Fuhrer. Marion Dodge is the founding director of the F Friends of Griffith Park and president of the Federation of Hillside and Canyon Associations. All the communities in Los Angeles have benefited from Marion's passion, vision, and vital efforts to protect green space and crowded urban environments. Helena David, escorted by Assembly Member Gatto. Helena David is a creative problem solver. She founded Those Who Care, a nonprofit that addresses the shortage of health food at local homeless shelters by building a network of homeowners willing to donate the otherwise wasted fruit from their existing trees. She donated over 100,000 pieces in 2011 alone. Barbara Bigby, escorted by Assembly Member Portantino. Barbara is an active member of the Altadena branch NAACP and serves in many leadership roles throughout the community. Barbara has always tried to make a positive difference. She believes that education is the civil rights issue of the 21st century and feels hopeful that working together we will make the difference in our community. Mary Cedillo, escorted by Assembly Member Cedillo. Mary Cedillo dreamed to keep her family united, own her own home, and help her children and grandchildren succeed. She, was succeeded, she has succeeded in all her dreams. She taught her children values like, if you can help someone, you are always ahead of anyone else. As a family, we look after each other, and being of modest means is not an excuse. It's the best reason to work harder. Her greatest joy is to hear her children, to say their friends and others, I will meet you at my mom's, to hear 83 to hear at 83 that they still want to come home even for a little while is the greatest story, joy that she could ask for. Betty T. Singh, escorted by Assembly Member Ng. Betty Singh is a pioneer in bridging Asian cooking style sauces and seasonings into the mainstream of American cooking. As Vice President of the Lee Kum Ki, Betty's expertise is sought after by national food retailers. An avid volunteer, she devotes much of her time to helping, to helping the immigrant Asian American community. Norma Lopez, escorted by Assembly Member Lara. Norma Lopez has dedicated her life to working families in the 50th Assembly District. 
She commits countless hours with unions and community groups to fight for social service, civil rights, human rights, and the labor movement. Her, sk her skill in mobilizing and organizing the community make her an adept defender of the middle class deserving of the accolades. Laverne V. Knight, escorted by Assemblymember Bradford, owner of the Laverne La Coffiere Beauty Salon, married to Alton Knight, and the mother of two, President Holly Park Homeowners Association Committee member, Bill the Raleigh Park Gymnasium President, North Gardenia Business Association recipient, Trailblazer Award member, Black History Committee Community Center Wall of Fame recipient, and board member, True Vine of Baptist Church. Dolores Zarita, escorted by Assemblymember Hall. Compton City Councilwoman Emeritus Dolores Zarita is the 52nd District's 2012 Woman of the Year. Mrs. Zarita has resided in the city of Compton for over 63 years and served on the city council for eight years. She has a long and rich history of community service and advocating for children and programs to improve the quality of life for all citizens in the city of Compton. Susan Dunlap, escorted by Assemblymember Butler. Susan, Sue Dunlap is the President and CEO of Planned Parenthood LA and Executive Director of Planned Parenthood Advocacy Project LA. Sue has led LA-based based efforts to defeat three anti-choice ballot measures in California, rebranded the agency through English and Spanish public ed campaigns, and provided leadership to increase reimbursement rates for California families planning providers, among many other successes. Sandy Cajas, escorted by Assemblymember Brownlee. Sandy Cajas works to promote development and access to capital through the region. Mrs. Cajas brings over 15 years of experience in the areas of economic development, marketing, and advertising. She owns Diversity Marketing Group, which creates multicultural programs, events, and fundraisers for ethnic communities. Winnie K. Heiss, escorted by Assemblymember Furutani. Through her efforts to train over 1,200 domestic violence staff volunteers, counselors, and law enforcement professionals from 140 agencies, Winnie Heiss has helped thousands of women and children escape the ravages of domestic violence. A former teacher, Winnie now spends her time raising money for scholarships to support Lakewood libraries. Aparna Hande, escorted by Assemblymember Mendoza. Aparna Hande is a resident of Cerritos and current president of the Federation of Indo-American Associations of Southern California. Aparna was chosen due to her inspirational leadership and strong ties in the Indo-American community and her volunteer work and commitment to promoting health and wellness throughout our community. Maureen A. Hines, escorted by Assemblymember Hernandez. Maureen A. Hines dedicated 300 days a year as a volunteer to the 57th Assembly District, coordinating donations and meals for the less fortunate as food bank director of Covina Assembly God of Church. A resident of West Covina since 1986, she offers hope through compassion and commitment to service.
Ruth E. Gonzalez, escorted by Assembly Member Calderon. Ruth E. Gonzalez has been a school board member in the Valley Lindo School District for 16 years. She was named Teacher of the Year for West Cove Elementary School in 2001. Ruth earned her Bachelor of Arts degree and teaching credential from Cal Poly Pomona. Rebecca Otwell, escorted by Assembly Member Donnelly. Becky Otwell is a pillar in the high desert communities. She has spent countless hours serving as Vice President of the San Bernardino County Fair Board and former Director of the Hesperia Ch Chamber of Commerce. On top of her tireless service, she is a three-time Realtor of the Year and was recently named among the Daily Press Most Aspiring Women. Elni Van Newtum, escorted by Assemblymember Torres. Elni Van Newtum's leadership and passion for civic engagement, education, and the empowerment of youth has inspired many in the community. She currently serves in the Thai Association of Southern California, the Los Angeles Junior Chamber of Commerce, the first T of Los Angeles, and the League of Women Voters. Barbara A. McGee, escorted by Assemblymember Carter. Barbara A. McGee has held the position of City Clerk of Rialto since 1994. She attended Southern University, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Azusa Pacific University. Ms. McGee is extremely active in her community, including writing grants for the United States Census for the City of Rialto, promoting local symposiums and festivals, sponsoring youth and exchange programs, and is involved in several local organizations. Patricia Nix, escorted by Assemblymember Morell. Patricia, mother of four, grandmother of ten, and great-grandmother of six, soon to be seven, has been married for 60 years. She lived in California for 45 years. She has been a leader in the Women's Club First Presbyterian Church of San Bernardino and Colton Joint Unified School Board. Rosemary Ortega, escorted by Assembly Member in Standing. Rosemary taught for 33 years at the College of the Desert as a board director of the Palm Desert Sister Cities Foundation. She has helped from, form bonds with cities in Mexico and New Zealand through citizen diplomacy. Palm Desert Sister Cities Foundation has received multiple awards of excellence by Sister Cities International, one being the Humanitarian Assistance Program that was initiated and led by Rosemary. Nicole Laffey, escorted by Assemblymember Cook. Nicole Laffey, a resident of Yukaipa, uh, is the executive director of the Yukaipa Animal Placement Society. YAPS is a nonprofit no kill animal shelter that strives to prevent euthanasia of dogs and cats in shelters throughout the Inland Empire by providing a temporary safe haven until a permanent home can be found. Kimberly Ryan, escorted by Assembly Member Jeffries. Small business owner Kimberly Ryan has served as Girl Scout leader and drill team coach and volunteers her time with Hope, Help Our People of Elsinore, Elsinore's Women Club, Lamb Fellowship, and Lake Elsinore and, and Wildemore Chamber of Commerce. Honored as hero in education for her work with local schools, she now, she now works with beautified Lake Elsinore's historic Main Street.
Diana Gadbury, escorted by Assemblymember Silva. Diana Gadbury resides in Huntington Beach. She is a proud mother of her daughter, Angela. Diana has volunteered throughout her life and currently holds the position as president for the Huntington Harbor Republican Women. She also serves as CRPA liaison for the California Republican Women Federation. Becky Carnes, escorted by Assemblymember Mansour. As a resident of Newport Beach since 1975, Becky has been active in the community through her involvement with the Orange County Family Impact Council, own Co Orange Coast Christian Outreach Week, and former president of Newport Harbor Republican Women and current parliamentarian on its board of directors. Marisol Rivera, escorted by Assemblymember Solorio. Marisol Rivera is Vice President of the SEIU Orange County and is dedicated to improving the lives of low-wage workers to earn livable wages, health care, and education. She's proud to empower women who face challenges working through poverty and immigration issues to achieve success for themselves and the greater community. Mindy Stearns, escorted by Assemblymember Wagner. Mindy Stearns has had a successful career covering the world of entertainment. The busy mother of six now donates her time and talent for philanthropic work in Orange County, raising millions of dollars for dozens of organizations that provide quality care and educational opportunities for our nation's youth and veterans. Mary Ibarra, escorted by Assemblymember Miller. Mary Ibarra has been a passionate volunteer and child advocate. Her dedication to her community and family, specifically outstanding service to the children of Riverside County, reminds us all that there is an opportunity every day to help others and be the best versions of ourselves. Dr. Su Ling Chin, escorted by Assemblymember Norby. Dr. Su Ling Chin has worked as a volunteer principal at the local Chinese language school. Dr. Chin is also a local educator and entrepreneur. She is active in the U.S. Taiwan exchange programs as well as committees on local chambers of commerce. Terry Rifkin, escorted by Assemblymember Harkey. Terry, Terry currently serves on the Board of Directors for the Dana Point 5th Marines Regiment Support Group. Der, Terry raises funds and creates opportunities to the, to the community, can, can demonstrate appreciation for the remarkable sacrifices our American military families are making for our freedom. Suzanne Stames Hall, escorted by Assemblymember Garrick. Susan Stames Hall is founder and executive director of the Angels Depot, which has provided over 800,000 meals inside 38,000 boxes to feed near needy senior citizens. Under Susan Hall leadership, volunteers at Angels Depot have successfully improved the quality of life for San Diego seniors by providing them non-perishable, nutritious food at no cost. Robin Kaufman, escorted by Assemblymember Fletcher. 
Assembly Member Nathan Fletcher is pleased to announce Robin Kaufman, a resident of Rancho Bernardo in San Diego. As his 2012 Woman of the Year, a resident of Rancho Bernardo since 1975, Robin has been largely instrumental in making our community a safe and vibrant place to live for her fellow citizens. Nicole Clay, escorted by Assemblymember Atkins. Nikki Clay has played a leadership role in almost every important community and civic endeavor in San Diego. She is the chair of the Convention Center Board. She was the president of the Holiday Bowl, and she is overseeing Balboa Park Centennial Celebration. Nikki is truly one of San Diego's treasures. Ronna Sampson, escorted by Assemblymember Block. A national crime reduction expert, Ronna Sampson helped found the Center for Problem-Oriented Policing and serves as the Vice President of the San Diego Center for Children. Ms. Sampson helps children thrive whose trauma, abuse, or mental health challenges stand in the way of their success and is a strong supporter of community arts and volunteer efforts benefiting children. Lorena Gonzalez, escorted by Assemblymember Hueso, a daughter of immigrant farm worker and a nurse, Lorena Gonzalez learned the value of hard work and determination at an early age. In January of 2008, Lorena became the Secretary, Treasurer, and CEO for the San Diego Imperial County's Labor Council, becoming the first woman and first person of color to serve as the head of the Labor Council. Honorable Ruth Bermudez Montenegro, escorted by Assemblymember V. Manuel Perez. Judge Ruth Bermudez Montenegro of El Centro has distinguished herself through the years through her efforts to expand educational access and opportunity in the Imperial Valley. She's actively involved in a number of education and civic organizations which have raised thousands of dollars for student scholarships and grants to support school programs and activities. Patricia High School Hillman, escorted by Assemblymember Conway. Pat Hillman is a lifelong Tulare resident. She is a pillar of the community and currently serves on the Tulare County Board of Education. Four generations of her family have owned and operated JD High School and Company, a 125-year-old international commodity trading business. Jacqueline DuPont Walker, escorted by Assemblymember Mitchell. Jacqueline DuPont Walker has been a professional in the public and private sectors for over, 30, for, for over 42 years. She is the founding president of Ward Economic Development Corporation and for 25 years has led a variety of developments. Mrs. DuPont Walker's strong commitment to faith-centered and empowering development has made her a prophetic voice locally and nationally. Members and guests, if we could have one rousing round of applause for our phenomenal 20.
2012 Women of the Year. I failed to acknowledge earlier that I'm representing today our colleague, Assemblywoman Bonnie Lowenthal, who we all know had back surgery. And so we have to send Bonnie warm, healing thoughts, because this is typically her day to shine on behalf of the Women's Caucus. So to Bonnie, we send our respect. I'd like to appoint a select committee on escort to bring our keynote speaker to the rostrum. If the escorts will please retire to the rear of the chambers, as their names are called. Assembly members Butler, Bonilla, Buchanan, Carter, Huber, Skinner, and Yamada. The escort committee will please escort Ms. Ledbetter forward. The chamber is filled with phenomenal women today, and I'm personally truly honored to have the opportunity to introduce Mrs. Lily Ledbetter. A Time article once stated, Ledbetter did not set out to be an activist. She didn't even involve herself in politics much. But after the Supreme Court ruled against her, she decided it was time to start. Welcome, Ms. Lily Ledbetter. Thank you. It's indeed my honor to be here with you today, and what an honorable day to be here with all the ladies that you have honored. I have a little squeaky voice. I worked Phoenix and Scottsdale, Arizona Saturday, and it was hot. I got off the plane here, and I've got a squeaky voice. But that's still, I still have a story to tell you. I'll give you the Reader's Digest version, the real short and simple. People say, why don't you understand defeat? and stay home. That's not who I am. And I cannot let up, and neither can you, because our women and our families of this great nation are so far behind. I had no idea how far behind we really were until 1998. Because you see, I had a long dream in this country. I was going to work hard, raise a family, I would save and have a nest egg, and when retirement came, I could retire and enjoy the fruits of my labors. It didn't work that way, though. I worked for Jacksonville State University, assistant financial aid director. I went to H&R Block as the district manager, managing 16 locations. In Goodyear Tire and Rubber in Gadsden, Alabama, built the radial division, and I knew radial tires was the way of the future, and they were going to implement a new management concept, and I wanted to be a part. So I interviewed, I was hired as a first line manager and worked there for 19 years. And to my surprise, after that 19 years, I learned by someone giving me an anonymous tip how much less I was paid than my male counterparts. They were white males doing the exact same job. But I got 40% less than each one of them did. But that didn't keep and had not kept Lily Ledbetter from climbing the buildings or the rafters and slinging tires or doing whatever the job required. I was given a top performance award in 1996 by Goodyear. In the early 90s, they handpicked four managers to start up the light truck radio division. I was one of those four. I had been honored. No one had ever told me I wasn't doing my job. In fact, Goodyear didn't even say that until after they lost the case. 
But I went. I filed a charge with the Equal Employment Commission immediately because that's what you do if you want to stand up for yourself. I thought about letting it go because at that moment in time, I was two years away from retirement. I couldn't let it go. It was not right that an ordinary American citizen be done this way when equal pay law was passed in 1963, Title VII in 1964, and ladies and gentlemen, we made 59 cents on the dollar in 1963 when those bills were signed. Today, we only make 77 cents. And you wonder why I keep doing this. That's exactly why. This is not right. I filed that charge in 1998 because I could not let it go. I couldn't. That's, that's not who I was. The Equal Employment Commission called me the next year and said, you've got one of the best cases we've ever seen. You probably need to get your own attorney because we're shorthanded. I found an attorney in Birmingham, Alabama that took my case pro bono because you see people like in middle class America like myself, we don't make the kind of money in trying to survive, especially on 40% less than my male counterparts and how money is saved for an attorney who can go forward with me for eight years. And I knew it would take a minimum of eight years. That's what I told my family in the beginning. But he did not get us to federal court until 2003. But we made it to federal court in 2003. It was heard by a jury. That jury came back in a week and said, we find in a plaintiff's favor $3.8 million. Because you see, that jury realized Lily Ledbetter and her family had been shortchanged with my overtime. We were paid time and a half, double and triple, and I worked a lot of overtime. I'd been shortchanged for all those years. Besides that, my retirement, my 401k, my contributory retirement, and today my Social Security are shortchanged simply because I did not get the pay I legally earned and was rightfully entitled to. That jury said we find in her favor, but the judge had to immediately drop my $300 million down to 300000 because I was only entitled to 300000 Back pay, you can only get two years back pay. Now, our opponents to the Ledbetter bill said, oh, we can't let this bill pass. There'll be women coming out of the woodwork to file lawsuits. Well, it might even be their relatives. There's no point. There's no money. If you stand up, you're standing up for what is right, no more, no less. So I left the courtroom at $360,000. But there's a lot to be said for headlines. The headlines from California to Florida to Chicago, Illinois, all across this nation read, Alabama woman awarded $3.8 million. My church called. They wanted me to buy them a bus. <laughs> they didn't realize I wasn't getting money. We had to wait until we didn't, after that Goodyear appeal, we finally got to the Supreme Court in 06. In the meantime, my husband developed cancer. We had just taken the left side of his face, grafted skin prior to my going to the Supreme Court to hear my case. He supported me, though, as well as my family. I heard my case in the Supreme Court in May of 07 then. The verdict came down. Justice Alito said, I should have filed my charge the first discriminatory paycheck I got, even though I didn't know it, and even though I had no way to prove it. Now, how do you do that? You tell me I would have done it because I was working for my family. But Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg hit the nail on the head. She said, these people don't understand what it's like in the real world. People don't stand around a water cooler discussing their pay. And even if you knew someone was making a little more than you, that don't mean it's based on discrimination. That verdict hit home. The lawyers told me, said, you don't have to deal with the media. We'll handle it. I thought about it. Again, I gave it my best thoughts. I had nothing to be embarrassed. I had no reason to be ashamed. The law was on my side. Because you see, when the five justices said I should have filed my charge when I got that first check, they were wrong because the law was on my side. They changed it, though. So when that verdict came out in May of 07, 
I couldn't let it go. NBC call, I said, come on in. CNN call, I said, come on in. Norman Lear's group call, I said, come on in. The law schools called. Everybody came to my home in Alabama. The reporters came from Washington Post, Chicago. They've been from all over the world. And I've traveled as far as Rome, Italy, sharing my story. This is not only an Alabama story. It's coast to coast in this country, and it's worldwide. I immediately took up the fight. I testified twice in the House in Washington, twice before the Senate. I traveled to Washington and lived there for three days or four days a week, lobbying for the Ledbetter Bill, because it was no longer about Lily Ledbetter and her family, except for my daughter and my granddaughter. I had to make sure for all the women across this great nation, they were given the right opportunity and had something to fall back on. But I traveled to Washington and a day for me would start out at five in the morning on a radio call-in program for two hours and go up on the hill. And we lobbied Congress, senators and Republicans. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, this has nothing to do with either party. This is a civil rights, it's a human right, it's a fundamental American right that we are paid properly in this country. <clears throat> When the verdict came out, Goodyear sent me a bill for $3,165. They wanted me to pay their printing cost. I had no money still. We were doing cancer treatments at my house. My husband then was in 34 radiation and chemo treatments. I didn't have any money hardly to get to those. So my Birmingham attorney sent it to the media. The Washington attorney who works for law schools too, he sent it to two law schools. I haven't heard from it. But I couldn't let it go. I continued to work, and then Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton and then Senator Barack Obama was working on the Ledbetter bill, and they took time to come back to Washington and vote on the bill. It took us 18 months to get the bill passed. It took me nine years instead of eight to get my final verdict. I've been doing this since 1998, and as the introduction said, I had never been into politics. I had never been into public speaking before but I got it now. <laughs> they called me to speak at the Democratic Convention, and they said, no, Lily, you can't wear black, because I love to wear black. I got it on today. But they wanted me to wear a bright color. I went to that Democratic Convention and walked out in prime time before Senator Clinton at the time. And um, the lady from the law center, who was my bag carrier, a lawyer, I really moved up in the world, but um, she said, now you be very careful what you say when you come off the stage, because that's a very influential reporter. But I walked out on that stage in prime time, gave my five minute speech, and it touched the people down front. I could see their eyes, tears was running down their face, because when you talk about your family and what you've done without, not for anything you've done. And now, today, I'm a widow, living like the senior women across this nation, struggling to get by on my retirement after losing my husband. It's not easy. And this is not right in this country because we're smarter, we have the resources, and we're better than this. But I walked out on that stage, gave that speech. <clears throat> turned around and walked off, and that reporter said, when did you endorse Obama? I said, right now. Because Senator McCain had said he didn't go back to Washington and vote for the Ledbetter bill. My problem, I didn't have enough education or training. Well, I thought about that medical doctor in New York who had a lawsuit just like mine, simply because she was not being paid fairly for teaching medical classes or at the hospital where she worked. This is something that you and I can continue this fight, and we continue it where we support people. And what I talk about, we've got to people, get people back across the aisle, working together in Washington for this bipartisan program, because that gets things done. It makes laws that protect our families, and that's what we're interested in. And I have to keep up the fight. I still go to Washington and testify. I testified on behalf of um, 
Kagan before she was confirmed last year. I do a lot of political, political speeches, but the main thing I do now is I talk on college campuses, political groups, unions, lawyer groups, or wherever I'm invited, I go. I appreciate the assembly inviting me today, and I want you to understand that you and I have a lot of work to do because we have a long way to go. If we have only gone in 50 years, from 59 cents to 77, there's something wrong in this country. Something wrong. <laughs> and we can fix it. I do have a book out. I did not get any money. It, the book was released February 28th, published by Random House. It's called Grace and Grit. I would appreciate if you'll buy a copy. It's uh, interesting reading. It's uh, written by a very good writer I found. And the grace comes about because I did a ballroom dancing competition for eight years. And she said, oh my, you're a rubber worker and you did ballroom dancing. But I did clean up pretty nicely to be a rubber worker. <laughs> and you know, the sad part was I liked that job. I was good at it. I liked Goodyear. It was a good product. And I was good at what I did. And I took pride in it. That's what the sad part is. I just wish I could have gotten paid for it. But you and I are going to make sure that the next generation is compensated fairly. And what I love, the men, the men get it today. Because most men have a mother or a wife or a sister, or they have daughters or granddaughters. You want them paid fair too, because you never know what will happen in life and what road you'll go down. Thank you, God bless you, and continue. Without objection, Ms. Ledbetter's remarks shall be printed in the Assembly Journal in their entirety. On behalf of the California Legislative Women's Caucus, thank you all for joining us today. We who serve here in the State Capitol are honored that you have joined us and you have accepted our commendations. This concludes our 2012 Women of the Year ceremony. We'll return to the regular order of business. Members will stand in brief recess to allow our honorees and guests seated in the gallery and in the rear of the chamber to exit. Members should not depart as we will work the file after the recess. Okay, members, we're going to take a brief recess, but members are not adjourned. We have additional business on the daily file, and we'll begin in a couple of minutes. There will be a Republican caucus in the Rules Committee room. Republican caucus in the Rules Committee room. Again, members are not dismissed or adjourned. We do have business on the daily file, but Republicans will have a caucus in the Rules Committee room right now. <laughs> 